Good morning, Oklahoma, and welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week's topic is heat synchronization and artificial insemination. It's a topic we revisit each spring as we think about spring calving operations and typically early April being about the time of the year we're ready to start turning out bulls or starting our AI program. And so we just talk about the pros and cons of heat synchronization itself and the potential it lends itself to for the sake of doing artificial insemination work. Artificial insemination permits us to use bulls that are genetically elite and can potentially improve our profit in raising a set of calves relative to our intended marketing endpoint. And so, as opposed to a natural service sire, the opportunity to go to a bull stud and actually pick out a bull and purchase semen that we know has got a little extra genetic merit to add to some of that value of a calf crop is a great thing. Where we get into those decisions on whether or not it's practical for us to AI and capitalize on that tends to get back to the whole concept of heat synchronization. Bringing a cluster or a sizable group of our cows into standing heat at the same time. And as a result of that, breeding them as a group, whether it's AI or naturally, permits us to look ahead into a calving season where we're gonna have more calves born earlier in the calving season. And for the sake of our cow herd, we're gonna end up with a cow herd that is more uniform in terms of what stage of gestation length that they're at at a given time. And so for the sake of managing, vaccinating a set of calves and adding value to a set of calves, we end up weaning an older, heavier, and more uniform set of calves as a result of more of them born early in that calving season. For the sake of managing the cow herd, if all cows are pretty much in sync relative to stage of pregnancy, it's easier to manage both from a nutritional standpoint and a herd vaccination standpoint. And so we always get back to the reality that a short calving season is a benefit in a cow-calf operation with respect to management and adding value to calves. So what are some of the things we need to consider? Big things as we look at a breeding season and heat synchronization is regardless of what protocol we use to actually synchronize the cows, it's going to require a minimum of two trips through a chute. We're going to have to have the manpower and the labor to actually sort on a set of cows, process a set of cows a couple of times. If we add artificial insemination onto that, that's at least one more time through the chute in order to get AI bred. Now, heat synchronization permits us to concentrate those efforts into a few days or maybe a few weeks, but at the same time, Heat checking is gonna require several hours, morning and night, during that stretch of time when the cows are coming in heat, the cows that are in heat that we're going to be breeding about 12 hours later, are gonna to have to be caught, contained. And so we're gonna to have to have the facilities and the labor in order to do that as we look at heat synchronization and potential AI. One of the other things that we get into that we gotta consider, do we have a good AI technician available if we want to do artificial insemination. A lot of times we connect the dots on the other part of this management plan. We get right down to the point that we're ready to AI cows. We want to schedule that. We want to have an AI technician that's available and ready. And in some cases, depending on the size of your herd, it's not just AIing a handful of cows of a given morning or at night, but we may be literally going through dozens of cows, maybe sometimes hundreds of cows, and the AI process itself takes a special skill set and is going to consume some time there. So those are the basic pros and cons and things to think through. Again, synchronization of the heat cycle, getting more cows bred earlier in the breeding season and more calves born earlier in the calving season is a big benefit. Uh, consider the pros and cons, see if that works for you. Consider your labor and facilities resources. And as I always say, I hope this helps. And thanks for joining us this week on Cow-Calf Corner.